What's up, Internet? It's Riley from No Fun. Welcome to my studio. Let me show you around. Okay, we're here in Toronto, Canada. If you're from here, you probably know this building as the really ugly green building at the corner of DuPont and Ossington. The building itself is over 100 years old. In 1917, it was Monarch Knitting Mills, which was a yarn weaving and textile factory. In the 50s, the factory changed to produce brooms, employing the visually impaired. The No Fun Studio has been here for three years, and I think it's really cool to be able to continue to use yarn to make textiles and rugs here in an old textile and yarn factory. I've been slowly working on finishing a big pile of rugs, and will be releasing the videos of my process as soon as I'm able to get them all completed. Subscribe and stay tuned for that if you haven't done it already. You could also follow our Instagram and check out the story highlights for more rug making videos. Since a lot of you are here from my rug frame building video but don't know anything else about me or no fun, I thought I'd show off a pile of other things I've made over the years beyond just rugs. I've been a professional artist and designer for about 15 years and I've been running the no fun brand for 10 of those. I really love designing patches, printing apparel, as well as making home and workshop items. Lately, I've been on a pretty serious binge of making bumper stickers. When I first moved in, I built out this front part of the studio to use as a photo studio and a retail showroom with a pickup counter and pop-up event space. But since quarantine, it's sort of turned into a mini bike build zone by accident. In the crawl space above all the mini bikes, we keep extra stock for my web store, as well as our most highly coveted and important business assets. On this side of the counter, we've got my computer desk. We used to use this thing uh, for retail pickup, so it would be bags and pickup orders and a credit card machine and that kind of thing. But since then, it's turned into miscellaneous storage for reference books and paint and extra camera equipment. It needs a tidy. I do most of the photo and video editing here as well as some remixes. It's DJ Slop Dog. I use this table for drawing and screen printing. It's got the clamps attached. What I want to print, I can just throw a screen on. On this side of the room, we keep all the rug making equipment and apparel and accessories, as well as extra stuff. This is Ethan, our studio manager. We've got this oversized display table that I built for when we had the showroom. 
But since then, it's become just sort of a catch-all for rug-making stuff. Underneath, we've got bins and bins and bins of yarn storage. And then all of the equipment is here. I try to keep all my rug making equipment in hard cases because the hundred year old windows here are the worst and everything is so dusty. In here I've got the whip and shaver for my NC carpet shaver. I've got the vacuum to go along with the NC carpet shaver as well as the angle plate for the carpet shaver. In here, we've got custom rug labels for finished rugs, some bobbins and needles, and oil for our binding machine. In here is the NC portable binder. And in this one, we've got a set of rough cut shears. In the big case, I've got my tufting gun, I use the ZQ2. In this case, I also keep a whole bunch of extra scissors and snips and tweezers and a yarn feeding tool. I've also got work gloves and earplugs. I've been using these standard mechanics gloves for wrist support and finger support. They've been pretty good, but I just bought these fancy anti-vibration gloves. I'll let you know how they work out. I also keep all the in-process rugs here waiting for backer or shaving or the final edge binding. Since we keep all of the rug making equipment and t-shirts and blankets and things that need to stay clean on that side of the room, all of the tools end up here. Anything that's messy happens on this side of the room. In the toolbox, we've got power drivers, safety equipment, screwdrivers, tape, Allen keys, wrenches, clamps, bike stuff, more Allen keys, more bike stuff, uh, ratchets and sockets, Dremel, in this corner we have where the clothing rack used to be. There's a welding cart. I've got a stock Monster Moto and a vintage bike I've been building. Over here we've also got a metal work table, the shop vac, and grinder and accessories in the step stool. Also have battery chargers on this shelf. Further into the room, we've got two work tables that I have on wheels so that we can move them around depending on which project we're working on. All the space that we used to use to work on projects is now just full of boxes. The problem I'm running into a lot with this studio is anytime I decide I want to make something new, we have to find somewhere for the boxes to go. I did install a pull-up bar, but there's barely room to use it. It's kind of cramped, but in here is mostly more studio tools. So we've got tape and stamps and ink, paper and paper and a paper cutter, vinyl for sign making, more sign making supplies, pop-up existed, that stuff for that, extra camera gear, stickers and fabric labels, vending machine parts and silk screen extra transparencies, got markers, vintage mark all paint markers, that's photographs, more stuff I made, more stuff I made. And this one is like various papers and stickers and craft materials. Also, a lava lamp. 
Way back in this corner, there's a big handmade glass top light table, which is pretty sweet. I've also got my silhouette cameo cutter and a traditional guillotine paper cutter, which is great for zines. Drawing on this table is awesome too. As well, more boxes. There's also a bike back here, another one. Over here, we're really starting to get into the web store and mail packing zone. In these bins, we've got socks and more socks. It's all socks. Hi, I'm Riley Hodgson, designer and owner of No Fun Press. Is it no fun? As you can see, we have a label printer. All of the small products in these U-line bins beautifully organized, as well as all of our mailers and other cardboard boxes. Thanks, Ethan. Over here, we got t-shirts. On the other end of the wall of t-shirts, we've got, you guessed it, more storage for stuff I made that you can enter by. I also have this set of cubes here for extra rug making material storage. There's obviously a crap load more yarn, backer fabrics, tufting cloth, a bunch of glue, buckets and spreaders for the glue, as well as binding tapes for the edge binder. On top, we just keep our everyday photo and video equipment. Uh, so a couple reflectors and tripod. The whole thing's on wheels, so when you need more extra workspace near a project, you can just roll it to where you're going. I laid out this case to fit a Sony a7 III, a Rode mic, as well as tripod and memory cards. There's also an old Canon point and shoot for backup or second angle. We also use Manfrotto tripods with the quick release base plates. These have saved me so, so much time in the studio since I got them. When I shoot film, I use one of these. Before I started No Fun, I co-founded a small publishing company with a few friends. When we were active, we released over 200 different photo zines, artist books, and print projects. We also hosted exhibitions and events across Canada, the US, and Europe. These are all small books of just my 35mm photos. If anyone wants to know anything about zines, leave a comment. Okay, I think that's it. If anyone has any specific questions about anything I left out, or is just wondering anything else, hit it in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond. If you're wondering why I'm not in the studio right now, it's because we all got evicted. The building owners terminated everybody's lease short notice, effectively evicting me and all the other artists, creatives, and makers in the building. The owners just want to demolish that building as fast as possible so they can build their condo. It's honestly just pretty sad and stressful to see everybody being displaced this way. There's not many studios like that left in Toronto. If you see the green line on the floor, that's the mark I just laid down to show the size of the new space we're moving into. It's going to be a tight squeeze and a hectic move, but I think we can make it work. If you have any ideas about how I can improve my setup, or at least save some space, smash them in the comments below, I'd love to hear them. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got lots coming up, including a bunch of new rugs and apparently having to build a brand new studio space. Thanks for watching.